Well, I feel like we just did this because the last ACMs were pushed back, but we're here again with another ACM post-award show recap. I'm Greg Reynolds from Country 105 in Calgary. We have Leanne. Leanne, introduce yourself, and then Chris, you can introduce yourself and the show you're on and the station you work for. My name is Leanne Whitehouse with Country 104 Middays in London, Ontario. Happy to be here with you guys today. And my name is Chris Sheets from Kissing Country 103.9 in Edmonton, uh, co-host the show with Jack and Matt, and I'm as well happy to be here. I am uh, also happy to be here. Thank you guys for making it a <laughs> trifecta. I'm also all happy to be here. Talking about the award show last night, I want to talk, uh, we've, we've talked before on these things about how important I think an intro is to a good award show. If you have a good intro, you're going to have a great award show. This intro stunk. I liked Miranda and Al King because that's my favorite song out right now. I think we should be spinning it in highest rotation on country radio. We actually did we debuted it on my show on Friday. We weren't supposed to, but we did. And we got such positive reaction, which shows just the range of country music these days on what people are into. Because is it country? Is it not? Who cares? It's really good. But then when you don't have an audience, what are you going to do for jokes? But I just felt like there was, they didn't even try anything between Keith and Mickey Guyton. There was no like, hey, you know, it's been a hard year or there's no, what a monumental, you know, a, event to be a part. There was not, it was just, flat between them and there was it went from like drunk to sleep which is usually my friday nights but i just felt like it was a kind of a want want start to the show chris what did you think you know I, I i agree on the song i thought that was one of my favorite performances of the whole thing and they kicked it out of the park both of them did that l king she's got a lot of sass to her doesn't she uh, it was just it was fantastic and uh keith looked a little nervous right off the bat i thought you know and, and again that's not his I mean, when you think about hosts for these award shows, you don't think, you know, when, although Keith is a very funny guy, I was, I was listening to a podcast he did with Conan O'Brien this past weekend. Keith has got it in him, but uh, he didn't, uh, they, they obviously said, we're not going to bring it out at all. Like between the two of them, um, they were solid as, as hosts, but there was nothing that stood out like we're used to with the Rebas and the Brad Paisleys and, you know, and all of that kind of stuff, for sure. It was very different. Well, I think what I wanted a little bit more of is like address the situation. Talk about, hey, it's been a super hard year. We are so missing being in front of you performing live. We're, we're finally back getting a little bit of normalcy and we get to perform some of the songs we've been waiting to perform for you. Talk about the struggle that it's been this past year. Talk about how monumental and historic it is for Mickey Guyton to be your co-host where Mickey can take the stage and talk about how important this is for her to be sure. sharing the stage and hosting this award. But there was just nothing. Leanne, what did you think? I thought, I, I, I was so excited when Miranda Lambert and Elle King were, you know, in the car and they had all of this montage of the shots and them walking up to the, to the award show. I thought that intro, I thought that part was really good. <laughs> I thought they're, I love the song. I love, you know, the bedazzled fringe jackets that they had on, bring back fringe, yep. I'm all for that. I actually thought that Elle King, Sean, more on that performance than Miranda did. I love Miranda, but I thought Elle King, I think she's just spunky. And like you said, she's sassy and she's Rob Schneider's daughter, which I just think is the funniest thing. I thought she did a great job. And then, yeah, the Keith Urban, Mickey Guyton walk out and it just, <laughs> I, one tried to launch a joke to the other and there was just a fat pause and it felt, oh, so you and I, we, we've all hosted events and getting them started is sometimes uncomfortable but that one felt that one felt strange mm. it's also like a good party which none of us have been to in over a year now or if you have don't tell me about it um <laughs> but it's like you're you know if you go to a party and everybody's just sitting around with no music playing that's what the, this start of the acm felt like like what or you got all hyped in the car on, on in the uber on the way there somebody had the ox the cord and you're passing out mints yeah you're like this is great and then you get to the party and it's just like and you're like, oh no, what did I just walk into? Um, <laughs> you mentioned Miranda Lambert. I love Miranda Lambert. I know the ACMs loves Miranda Lambert, but I think that if we're going to let one artist perform three times in one award show, we need to rethink our strategy because there are so many other deserving artists that could have taken the stage to share a little bit of their music. I mean, Sunil Arts, Canada's own from small town Saskatchewan has the number three song in the U.S. right now. Give her a 15 second stage to do somebody like that or you can give kit Moore a little time slot or or parmalee and blanco brown you let blanco talk after his massive accident this just the way song has been the biggest song on the radio for like two months now give them a little slot but no we get to watch miranda open 
Miranda does her her song from the Marfa tapes, and then you watch her perform with Chris Stapleton, and I'm just like, that's a lot of Miranda Lambert performances for a show that we could have maybe snuck in somebody else. Is there somebody, Leanne, that you wanted to see perform last night that didn't? I mean, I will say, what, what, what did that happen with Chris Stapleton? Because Chris Stapleton was supposed, supposed to perform with his wife, Morgan, yeah. but she's a doula, so she got pulled away, you know, 30 minutes before the show started. So, I mean, it was only supposed to be Miranda twice. in Which is still a lot. Her. It's still a lot. <laughs> um, the one thing I will say, I noticed a difference between the ACMs and the, I think it's the Grammys, because that was just a couple couple weeks ago. The Grammys do a lot of collaborations. You'll have two different artists performing together. So you get to see twice as many and have twice as much. And I would have liked to see a little bit of that. And to your point, I would have loved to see Tenille Arts. We had Tenille Towns perform last year and that was such a big deal. And she did such a great job. Um, I would have loved to have seen Kelsey Ballerini do her own thing by herself. I think she's a beautiful voice. She did such a great job on the voice uh, the past couple of weeks. So I would have loved to have seen her. Chris Sheets, who would you yeah. have loved to see take the stage last night? Well, besides Garth Brooks, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's my usual go-to. <laughs> uh, you know what? I It's tough. There's a lot of politics behind the scenes. I, You know, and Miranda, you're right. They love her. And she is the most uh, awarded uh, artist of all time when it comes to the Academy Country Music Awards. I could watch Miranda all night. I really could. I I didn't have a problem. And I understood why that that third song. And let's, can we go there for a second from a guy who, said goodbye to his puppy about a year ago and still hasn't recovered. I mean, that Maggie song thing, I literally, I literally was crying in the last verse of it. And I'm just like, oh man, I've lived this, Chris. I've lived it. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, sure. E either one of the Tennille's would have been great. Some kind of selfishly, some kind of a Canadian influence would have been great for us. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen it. It's a three hour show. There's lots of time there. So, but there's so much politics behind the scenes between record companies battling that it's never as easy as, as just going, well, why doesn't Parmalee? Cause I was excited. I thought that Parmalee Blanco Brown song could have been, should have been a part of it, but they probably plan all this stuff so far ahead of time that they had no clue where that song was going to be sitting at the time of you, the award show. You think that, but then we get to launch Miranda's The Marfa Tapes, which aren't even out yet. So yeah, I would agree with you. And yeah, then she got right. to do this brand new thing. So I don't know. The, yeah. the one thing I thought they did a spectacular job of in a time that is super hard is showcasing Nashville, going from one venue to another. You got to be on Broadway with that little big town performance. You had sort of the under the bridge stage for Lady A and, and Ashley McBride. I thought that that, sort of showcasing Nashville. They did a beautiful job of that last night. Was there a moment that was shocking to you last night that you didn't expect to see, somebody you didn't expect to win, a moment you didn't expect that was coming, Chris? Uh, you know, Luke Bryan winning Entertainer of the Year, I think was a surprise. I mean, I know that he's, you know, he's got his thing on, uh, you know, working very hard, you know, in LA and doing all the stuff he's doing on television. But I was surprised to see Luke Bryan win that award. I, that was the biggest shocker for me. I, I don't know what I just, I, for some reason, I just thought that was going to be, it, I thought it was going to be Luke Combs night and I was dead It should have been. Yeah. It should have been Luke Combs. <laughs> Luke Combs. I, Leanne, you and I yeah. were talking before we started here, you launch into your diatribe about how Luke Combs should have won. He did a full live concert for us on social media while we were in lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. And he did it for free. I mean, there's been so many, you know, Instagram lives and, you know, from Keith's underground or whatever he called his studio that he did, but Luke Combs put on a full free broadcast. I mean, what else can you ask for from an artist? Like I thought Luke Combs should have, should have taken that. Absolutely. Agreed Not only you. did Luke Combs give us the, the free live concert, but he released probably a song a week. He was like, hey, I just wrote this one. Here's another loop. You're like, oh my God, I'm getting every new, every week I get a brand new song from Luke Combs, which what more can you ask for in a time where all we have is music because we can't leave our homes for the most part. So for Luke Combs not to win, Chris, to your point, not only yeah. entertainer of the year, but male artist of the year. I mean, I, yeah, whatever. I, I, Thomas Rhett's great. I love Thomas Rhett. I'm a big Thomas Rhett fan, but he really did nothing over this last year where Luke Combs, like we've said, has done everything. So to your point, Chris, with all the behind the scenes political stuff, that's where you see some of the surprises at the ACMs. I, like you, was blown away that Luke Bryan somehow won Entertainer of the Year. I think basically his label said, 
Hey, listen, uh, Luke ain't going to show up to your show anymore if you don't give him an award. It's been too long. <laughs> like, all right, well, fine, whatever. Like, we'll give Luke this one, I guess. Yeah. And, that was, and a, that was a good here. accent. I, I so Hold much. on. Thank you so much. Is there a, but for the highlights, is there a performance that stuck out to you the most? Were you like, on a night of sort of, there wasn't really much that stood out. What was the one performance that did stand out to you, Leanne? Oh, okay. Well, I feel like a lot of people are talking about Carrie Underwood because vocally, performance-wise, that might have been the most impressive performance. To be perfectly honest, that album is maybe not entirely something that I'm going to put on when I'm at home, just listening to music by myself. Um, so <laughs> you're like, are you, are, do you feel the same way about it? Okay, so I was sitting there watching last night and I was like, my thing I'm okay if they did it for one song but like six seven minutes uh, I felt like I was watching a Christmas church choir I was like why am I being brought back to Christmas or Sunday service when I'm trying to be watching an award show I get that she's Queen Carrie but like can we cut down the amount of gospel that I have to listen to tonight it was just it just seemed like a lot in my face in one night <laughs> it, it was it was a lot so you know appreciating Carrie's singing abilities and putting that aside um I would say I thought Little Big Town was super fun I liked that they were on stage and I liked that we could see or on the street and I liked that we could see the lights and stuff and Mickey Guyton hold on her voice is just incredible Chris uh you know what I I loved Blake Shelton in Austin I love that I love that song I mean you know, sometimes it'll never get better than the first. And, and in his case, I think that's that's it. And the fact that he sang that song was awesome. And then Minimum Wage is a great tune too. Uh, to, to, to do those two back to back, I thought Blake was uh, one of my highlights. And, and I talked about the kickoff. I mean, with El King and Miranda was great. And I already talked about Maggie's song, the song about dead dogs. <laughs> and <laughs> Al, Al, Alan Jackson, it was nice to see Alan, but he was a little bit shaky, I thought. I hate to say that. Uh, because I love Alan Jackson, you know, like I love Alan Jackson, but I thought he was, you could tell that he had a little bit of rust on his, on his, uh, you know, on, on his pipes for sure. And, and uh, so, yeah, I, I think that that, that Blake Shelton stuff was my favorite part. From a guy who married the first girl he ever took on a date. Yeah. You don't ever get better than your first. And you're right. Blake Shelton. <laughs> you never do. <laughs> you scored some good brownie points with that one, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> But I agree with you. I like Austin is the first song that I ever knew the lyrics to front and back. Like I, it's the first song I knew how to sing all the way through. I was confident on the lyrics. So to watch him do that was nostalgic for me. Uh, Alan Jackson doing Drive. I was like, oh, I love that song so much. That was beautiful. And that I think is what we need more of in these award shows. Like, yes, we love the new music. And yes, trust me, I, when Eric Church releases new music, like he just did, I inject it into my veins for 24 straight hours until... I have to go to sleep. But I think having just blocks during these award shows to let an Alan Jackson come back and do a song we all know, or to have a Blake Shelton who's had a long career. Like if Kenny Chesney got up there next year and did She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy, I'd probably lose my mind. I yeah. think that we need like more of these nostalgic, just maybe one an hour, bring an artist that's still kicking and has a long career, somebody that hasn't recorded in a while, something nostalgic every single hour to break up the new, 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 new. I would have loved to see Kenny Chesney pull out Pirate Flag or Floribama, rip off the sleeves on his shirt and just go full beach Kenny. Like I would have been out of my chair. Like that would have been the moment for me last night if he did it. Absolutely. Now, the only other thing I will say is that I, you know, performance of the night for me, Leanne, you touched on it, was Little Big Town. That, that to me, performance wise, checking out Broadway, song wise, feel wise, vibe wise, that was a home run. I didn't think anybody even came close to what Little Big Town did last night. And that's missing Philip, who has COVID-19. So congratulations <laughs> to them, because that was absolutely incredible. I just, I, I found there was a lot of this flatlining during the show last night and not a lot of high points where Little Big Town came in and just brought everybody up like that. Chris, what did you think of the um, sexual yeah. chemistry between Marin Morris and Ryan Hurd? I was making I, you know, it on stage for us. We were watching and, and I'm just like, just go, go guys, go. Like, I was just like, cause it was like, it, it reminds me of those, you know, those, those, 
those rom-coms where you just want them to kiss so badly, like just kiss already. But uh, I thought it was beautiful. And, and it's funny because when they finally did kiss, uh, my wife and I are sitting on opposite couches, which is kind of sad in its own way. But uh, <laughs> you're doing the, the way across reach. I look, hey, six six feet, man, six feet. I looked, I looked over at her. She looked at me, and we both smiled like like uh, teenagers again. Like there was something about that performance that I mean, they are in love. Like there's no, it's not, you know, it is. There's there's nothing fake about that. I don't think anyway. And you know, I mean she probably tells him when he's in love. She just, that's just Marin. You're in you love, love, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought when they, when they started singing, Ryan, so Ryan started the performance and Marin did this just tiny little smile, this cheeky little smile at him. And I thought, this is gonna be good. And Greg, I was saying to you earlier, I was prepared for them to make baby number two on stage yeah. last night. Yeah. Like, I thought we were... I was like, is this about to go like Megan the Stallion, Nicki Minaj swap on here? What's about to happen, Marin? <laughs> I thought as a whole, I thought they did in a pandemic year to invite all the frontline workers from Vanderbilt, I thought was a super classy move. I thought to jump from venue to venue was fantastic. I thought Dirks's tribute, uh, that bluegrass tribute was fantastic. Yeah. That to me was a, a very cool highlight showcasing some different venues around to be at the Bluebird was fantastic. I thought as a whole, they did a great job at pulling this award show off. I just felt like it needed more. Oh my goodness. Did you see that last night on the ACM moments? And they just, they didn't have very many of those. And I think it's to your point again, Chris, it's a lot record label focused and they're, they're trying to appease everybody and every artist in every camp, you get this time slot, you can do this new song, you get, Instead of what you said, Leanne, what would be great is to get some pairings together that we might not expect. Like, why doesn't Alan Jackson pop on stage with John Party like he did a couple of years ago when they did the ACM throwbacks? Like, do more of that kind of stuff where we can't just pop on Kiss and Country, Country 104, Country 105 and hear the same song that we just heard on the award show. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Is there a combination you, you'd want to see next year, Chris Sheets? Besides Garth Brooks and somebody? <laughs> well, John Party was missing. You're right. And I hadn't even thought about that till you brought it up. But I mean, that, you know, he's about as hot as they get. Uh, yeah, besides Garth Brooks and anybody on the planet, uh, no, I'm good. Um, I, I think that, uh, yeah, that is that is a good question. Um, man, yeah, you know, t- I, I don't know. Like you say, Tim McGraw and Taylor Swift would be pretty awesome. <laughs> How hard could that be? <laughs> and they perform Tim McGraw? Like, let's. Oh, there it is. It's meant Come to on. happen. It's supposed to happen. Yeah, it would be beautiful. Combo you want to see together? I would say, I mean, right now, because it's starting to get nice out and it's starting to get summer, I, I am truly and genuinely on a Kenny kick right now. Anytime you get in my car, it's Kenny Chesney. And I would love to hear. I don't know if this could ever happen, but I would love to hear Kenny Chesney with Tim Hicks because I feel like they would just have so much fun on stage together. Out, out here, close to you know where Tim Hicks grew up and is, is from, we are big, big, big Tim Hicks fans. So that would be awesome. I know it would never happen, but maybe this is a CCMA idea. I want Shania Twain, Tennille Towns, Lindsay L, Tennille Art, and maybe Terry Clark to do like, who's any man of mine, who's better be boots been under... Just something this like, this like power female Canadian ensemble yes. just to crush it. Yeah, that sounds great too. I'm for all of those. And Garth um, Brooks mixed in. It, it's funny, Leanne. My wife, and again, I just but it, it was funny last night when Kenny came out and he sang a song. She looked at me from the other couch and she said, "Is he still a thing?" <laughs> and, I, and I said. Yeah, we still play his music. Oh, okay. It was just so fun. It's just like, is Kenny Chesney still a thing? And I said, He's still there. I, hope pe- I hope people don't say the same thing about me when they hear me on the radio. No, we <laughs> love you. I kind of slammed the, the Carrie Underwood gospel thing. And it's not that I didn't like it. The voices were beautiful and Carrie can sing a phone book. But wouldn't that have sounded and felt better during that In Memoriam segment that Kenny Chesney randomly did a song, his new song for? Like, as we're remembering the lives that were lost, would Carrie's gospel music not have felt just perfect in that moment? And that way it wouldn't have seemed so just disjointed and we could have given Kenny his little place to do his new song. 
that would have been a good fit. That would have uh, probably been a better fit. You're right, because all, all of a sudden, out of the blue at the end, there was the in memoriam, which, by the way, I, I kind of think Charlie Pride might have deserved a segment. That would be just me. I agree. So, um, you know, and, and, and I don't know. They did a segment on the CMAs, did they not? Maybe they did the segment on the... No, he, he was... Charlie was at the CMAs. That's right. And this then is the first, first award show we... So it would have been great. You're right. If we could have had, you know, bouncing around, you had the floating stage, the Ryman, the Grand Ole Opry, you have Tootsie's, you had the Bluebird, whatever, all the places. If, if, if we could have jumped around and had people do 30 seconds of Charlie Pride music from Miranda to Blake to whatever, 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 that would have been a fantastic way to do that. You're right. He deserved yeah. his own moment. Yeah, I did. honestly, I was at home and because it was getting so late because I didn't realize it was a three hour award show. I was making my lunch, brushing my teeth. I was listening to the, to the performance, but I didn't actually realize it was the in memoriam section. So at the very end, I looked up and I thought, I just missed all of that because I just, with this song that they did, I just, it, to me, it didn't yeah. seem like it really fit or lent itself to that. And to your point, I think that the Grammys also did a really good job honoring all of the country stars that passed away last year and to kind of just skate over it and really just, you know, oh, we got to include that. It felt a little bit rushed. Like they could have, you know, it just felt like a missed, missed moment. It also felt like a miss, and I'm not a fashion guy. Look at me, I can't. But Kenny Chesney wearing his drunk uncle at a barbecue or a wedding outfit with like the ill-fitting golf shirt and the golf pants that didn't fit with dress shoes. I'm like, this is what you're wearing for your AC? Look at how dull the women and the men are. This is what you chose? Yeah. Did you see what Kane Brown was wearing? Come on, Kenny. Lord, what was that? <laughs> Dumpy dad on a fancy cruise. It was like, what is, what are you wearing? You've been awful. on, Greg, you've been on a cruise with a guy who was looking like a dumpy dad <laughs> yeah. on a cruise. That was me. So yeah, you've, you've seen what that looks like. Uh, but anyway. He, he yeah, shot that's for you shop. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. In my mind, I was like, what are you wearing? Uh, and, just whatever he pulled out of the closet. Your wedding, and he's wearing a golf shirt and ill-fitting golf pants. Like Randy, <laughs> go home. <laughs> Jesus. To your point, though, when Thomas Rhett went to pick up the award for male artist of the year, what did, did he have a full? It wasn't a tux, but he looked. It was a suit. Yeah. He and and that's what Kenny could have maybe not you know quite as going to a wedding, but he he could have stepped it up a little bit. Uh, Brad Paisley surprising Jimmy Allen was, I think, fantastic. Yeah. You know, pranking him halfway through showing up and Jimmy <laughs> Brad actually showed up. Um, in, in looking ahead to next year, because I think we've covered this year pretty good. Um, I think Mickey Guyton needs to stay as the host, but maybe switch up Keith Urban because he's just not a natural pres He is a good straight man, but somebody needs to bring – yeah, the entertainment value, and I, I could see Mickey's personality coming out a little bit as the show went on. And it was actually fantastic to watch her loosen Keep up and become more of herself. Urban. Keep freaking <laughs> Urban! I was like, "That's fantastic!" So, get Mickey a different co-host. I think she stays because she's she did a really great job first time out. I think we need more pairings together, more wow moments. But again, in another pandemic year where people can't be together and you're jumping from one venue to another, what more can you ask for? And if anybody tries to slam Dan and Shay on lip syncing, think again. <laughs> and, and we were talking to Cheryl Hickey from ET Canada today. And like she said, uh, is it Shay that needs the Pantene commercial uh, or is it Dan? Uh, no, that's Dan. Shay's, that's... Shay's the, the beautiful singer. All right. Dan, <laughs> the eye candy is, is, is Shay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, exactly. What, what do you want to see next year that we didn't see this year, Chris Sheets? Uh, you know, who would be a great uh, a host? Uh, Thomas Rhett's going to have his day. I bet you Thomas Rhett will be a host at some point in the future. I'd like to see that. Um, you know what? I hate to say it, but I think that award show, sometimes um, less is more. That award show could be two hours long. Yeah, I think, I think three hours on these award shows is a stretch. And this new age, Jack, the, that I work with, I mean, she's like, 
I kind of wanted the performances to be a minute long each. I mean, that is the new world, right, that we live in. So I think for me, I love the three hours. I love the performances. I could watch all day, but I don't think that uh, that's common now. I think I think maybe shortening it down, tightening it up to two hours like the CCMAs are uh, might be an answer there too. I hate to say it, but I think that they might look at that in the future. I think three hours is a lot of time on television. I think it's it's too much time invested for people. Leanne? I would have to agree with that because if I see a movie, if I'm scrolling through Netflix and I see a movie is three hours long, I go next. I'm I'm not going to be sitting down to watch it, especially in just one sitting. So I found the last 45 minutes while we did have the Little Big Town performance and we had some of the biggest awards, the last 45 minutes seemed really long to me for that reason. So I could go, you know, two hours, two and a half hours just to you know, button it up, tie it up with ribbon and, and have it really nice. And to your point about the host, I think Vicki Guyton should stay absolutely. But then you need somebody who can joke with Vicki Guyton and do those, oh, crrr, like, like, like she did. Yeah. You need somebody. I don't know. I'm going like this because Keith Urban just felt stiff, although we all know he's great. But yeah, somebody who can just, just relax and have, have fun up there. That's what you need. You guys mentioned the time limit, but both of you would sit down and watch three back-to-back -back episodes of Yellowstone. So it's not the time. <laughs> it's not, it's not That's the three That's different hours, though. <laughs> Mentally, it's different. Yeah, you uh, got that right. You're, you're absolutely uh, right, Greg. I want to see, and I, maybe this could be the ACM's new thing. I want to see uh, a new artist like a Kane Brown cover something from Alan Jackson. But then I want to see Alan Jackson come up and do one of Kane Brown's songs. So I want to see, I want to see them do the stage together, but I want to see them like go back and forth between each other's massive hits. I just think that bring the old with the new, watch how Kane Brown can do drive just as well as he can do worship you. Like I promise you that you'll show more range on both artists by letting them do both sides of the coin. That would be a great idea. Make it I happen, Greg. I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. How do we find you on the social medias? Leanne. At Leanne Radio with all the E's, all the N's. L-E-E-A-N-N-E -E -N -N -E Radio. I know. There's the whole alphabet. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sheets with all the Z's. How do we find you on social yeah, media? Sheets with all the Z's. It's exactly right. Nobody spells it right. It's Chris and S-C-H-E-E-T-Z. And, and all right, you can that's find it. me all over. Thank you for joining the post-ACM recap. I am Greg Reynolds, Greg R105 on social media. And uh, if we got anything wrong, don't let us know because we don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs>